Welcome to the Transfer Exchange Dispute Show. And it's changing. And some say for the better. Because now it's not just Arsenal transfers. In fact, it's not even transfers. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, it's too restrictive. Now, 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 you're thinking, how could we improve on what was a great show already? Well, we can. We're here from the Transfer Exchange Show to give you the best up and coming talent from around the globe. I know, we come up with such great ideas here. The best up and coming talent, the, the sweetest gems. We get here first for you. Your opportunity to brag to your mates. Top trumps their players. We cover players from all across the globe. From Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Germany. <laughs> Jamaica, Angola, we have them all and we're bringing them to you. Now, welcome to the new and improved, The Dispute. Welcome to another episode of the Transfer Exchange of The Dispute. And today, I could potentially be losing friends or work colleagues, should I say, because I've set my scouts possibly the hardest task of all. It could get a lot harder, boys. But today, I thought I'd really challenge you. I thought I'd test you. Because I feel like the other ones are a bit too easy. We need to really show the viewers what we're about. And we're not about the obvious. We will go, we will go to extreme lengths to find new talent. We'll go to extreme lengths to find the best talent, the newest talent, talent you might not have heard of. And today, I've given them such task. I think they definitely well, it's all about educating, and it's not, and it's not just about educating you guys. It's about educating ourselves as well. So, what do we have in store today? We have Ricardo Calafiori of Roma. We have Ryan Eknawari of Angers, and we have Luin Candindo of RB Leipzig. These three are well regarded in the football scene. Like, I mean, if you know, you know, and if you don't. You're gonna to get to know now because my scouts are gonna give you detailed information about them. Not too long, not too long. We're giving you just enough for you to go and have a look yourself. And once you've seen it, tell us who you like in the comment section, who you've looked at and who you rate. But first of all, let's not waste any time and let's see what the boys had to say about these three gems. Evening everyone, Simon here, the chef. Absolutely glorious weather outside. So I'll make this quick. Make this quick and snappy, and I'm off in the sun. But then I've got to go and do some scouting as well for Kieran. So, yeah, I'll have to get that done first, because if not, Jesus, the way he just gets on you. Anyway, what I'm going to talk to you today about, I hope I pronounced this right, Ricardo Calafari is an under-19s Italian international, plays on the left uh, not a left wing, but plays actually left back for his uh, for his club. He's only uh, a young kid at the minute. He's still up and coming. He's coming through, but he plays all across the back four, which is unheard of for for literally a player. It's unheard of. He's played left back. He's played centre back. He's played uh, right centre back, and he's also played right back. This is unbelievable as a player. He is one absolute gem to keep an eye on. He's made 13 appearances. He's only scored four goals, but he's assisted two as well. And uh, for under-19s in Italy as well, he's been talked about a lot. And I mean a lot. There's a lot of clubs that are looking at this kid when they're scouting him. He's been, he's, uh, been compared to the next... Um, Oh, I forgot his name now. He's being compared to the next Marcelo at Real Madrid. Now, that's just unbelievable in itself. He's been talked massively by Paolo Neved, who's told Juventus to keep tracks of him. He's, uh, he's, he's not in uh, Serie A at the minute. He's still up and coming, but he's making movements, this kid. He's making absolute movements. The way that he just controls when he's at the back four, he looks like he's a centre back, but he's not. He's a left. He's a left back. He can play left. He can play left and right for centre backs. He can co cover fantastic for the right back. 
and uh, for left back, he's been absolutely exceptional. His uh, percentage of his tackles that he wins and the crosses that he gets into the box is 44% out of 100, which is absolutely unbelievable for an under 19s. Under 19s, he's only 18 years old, this kid. 18 years old. And he's absolutely making movements. Napoli have uh, already be, have already talked to the young lad and his agent and tried basically to get him to get him a move to Napoli. Obviously not a Napoli starting uh, eleven, but he'll be in there under 21s team through the academy. Uh, he's been looked at by um, Arsenal, ironically. He's been looked at by uh, Manchester City. He's also been looked at by. Uh, by uh, Leicester City as well, who are starting to make movements, Leicester City now, behind the scenes. Uh, I'm trying to think of something, there's so much more I've read of this kid, it's unbelievable. Uh, Cannavaro, has compa they've compared him to the next Cannavaro when he plays centre-back. It's just, it's unbelievable, left-back, right-back, both centre-back positions he can play. He's been compared to the next Marcelo or Real Madrid. How can you get any better than that? Marcelo, for me, is probably one of the best left left backs that you'll ever see. And he's absolutely just unbelievable. But this kid is definitely going places. So keep an eye out for this lad because he's definitely going to make a massive splash when he arrives. Go look him up. He's absolutely amazing. You will not be disappointed. All right, everyone. Jerome here. My pick for this week's dispute is a left back from France that is absolutely destined to have a massive career. His name and his club are both quite difficult to pronounce, especially for me, but I'll give it a go. His name is Rayan Aitnouri and he plays in the French top division for a team called Angers or Angers. So what type of player is he? Well, as I mentioned earlier, he plays at left back and I've given him the nickname Spotty. Not because he's got a lot of acne on his face, but because he is excellent at spotting danger, intercepting challenges, but also spotting a pass. And I think passing is a very strong part of his game. He only turned 19 earlier this month and has made 17 appearances this season. His performances have been so good that he's already attracting interest from some of the biggest clubs around Europe. Notably, Manchester City are known to have a very keen interest in him. As you can imagine, for someone that Man City are linked with, he is excellent on the ball, super comfortable, can take players on, and he, he's one of these players that could possibly move further up the field as his career develops. But from what I've seen, I'd like... I'd like to, to see him play at left back for a good few seasons and let him develop there. So there we have it. Rayan Aitnouri, the future of France's left back position, is in very strong hands. Oh, hello. You ready for this week's dispute? Well, this week's dispute will last about two minutes. Um, that's why I've been out here enjoying the sun. Um, but okay, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Um, we'll give my colleague a chance. Um, this week's I'm going to tell you about a, a left back. His name's Luan Candingo. He's a he's a left back. He's from Brazil. Um, at the moment, he's um, he's playing for a Brazilian side called RB Bragantino. Um, on loan from RB Leipzig, who have seen the quality of this this uh, young kid and are basically in the process now of wanting him to get back a year early. Is that good? Um, he's just like in golf when you win the best, get the green jackets. This young kid has already got the yellow shirt, the gold shirt of the Brazilian national side at 19 years old. He already like I said, he's planning to come back in the summer uh, to Leipzig, um, where I believe he's just going to go from strength to strength. 
Um, he can play left back. He can play. Um, he can play left side of midfield. He can play left wing. Now, at the beginning of this, I told you that I could end it, and I can. I can end this now because the person that spotted Luan was another Brazilian left back, and he was. He told him that he was the best left back at his age that he's seen. And that player was Roberto Carlos. Now, I don't need to say no more when you get that type of um, compliment from an incredible legend, like Brazilian legend like Roberto Carlos. So, as far as I'm concerned, dispute is over. This one is over and over. Steve from the Transfer Exchange so says it's over. And also, Roberto Carlos says it's over. Trust me. Okay, now you've seen them, comment below in the comment section. Now we're gonna check out the experts because it wouldn't be a dispute show without the experts now, would it? Today, we've got Jamie Brown. He's a massive Tottenham fan and he knows everything there is to know about the team. He knows inside of knowledge, outside of knowledge. He's just a good guy to know. He's the founder of the Daily Hotspur and he covers Tottenham on Love Sport Radio. We had a lot to speak about and I guarantee you're going to see him on a podcast soon. Enjoy. Sweet, mate. On you. All right, all right, all right. Just got a few questions to ask you just about football in general. It's nothing, no. too, nothing too taxing. We're not here to banter each other. It's not, <laughs> it's not an Arsenal-Tottenham thing. It's just a football thing. Okay, cool. That's all right. All right, right. All right Okay. <laughs> We'll do a little introduction. Everyone, welcome Jamie Brown from the Daily Hotspur, the last word on Spurs, uh, Love Sport Radio, where he talks about Tottenham. Where do you fit it all in? Where do you find oh, the no, time? No, well, unfortunately, yeah, obviously this season it's not uh, not been the best speaking about Spurs, but look, obviously we've had a long period of that football, so I'm yeah, really excited to, to start talking about football again. So yeah, it should be good. Oh, cool. Um, Maybe not everyone's seen on Don Valley and not definitely not seen on Don Valley at his best. Tell everyone mm. what what when he does really come through at Tottenham, when he does at his best, what does he bring uh, to Tottenham? To be honest with you, he is kind of that all round midfielder, really. I think one thing that, that did strike me, he, he he kind of, I thought when he arrived, he'd be more of a defensive player. Now, actually, it turns out that he is more of an attacking player. Mm. I think when he goes forwards, the way he carries the ball forward is fantastic. He's very difficult to dispossess. Um, I think one thing really has struck me um, from, from seeing bits of him is his passing. The way that he can pass the ball through the lines. I think there was twice this season, I think it was both against Man City home and away, where he got two assists, where he's played fantastic balls through a, a range of players, um, picked out his man. and then So that, that's an area of his game. His passing is fantastic. Uh, his ball carrying is fantastic. That was something that we missed. Um, when we sold Moussa Dembele, I mean, he was a fantastic player, Moussa Dembele, unfortunately, got to that stage in his career where we, he wasn't able to do what do effectively as he, as he was in the past. But and Dembele, he's shown signs of that. And, you know, although he's had that difficult start and, you know, performances haven't been where Spurs fans want it to be for him, especially coming in at such a big price tag, um, you know, we, we've, we've seen so much signs of quality. So that's kind of why Spurs fans are like, look, we'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, as I said, he looks in really good shape now and you just hope that now he's at that level, he's at that fitness level, he can start to show what he's got to do ability-wise because yeah. he's a very, very talented player. Yeah, one thing that is encouraging is uh, I remember Jose getting kind of grilled for, for digging him out a little bit for his bad performances. And his yeah. response to that was, especially when um, there was links with Barcelona and moving away, his response was, no, I, I want to stay here and fight for my place. I want to hear show, and show everyone what I can do. And that's the kind of response you want from a player. Like, it shows great mentality. Absolutely. I think his response has been really good, actually. He seems to have really got his head down. I think there's been a lot of reports that Jose Mourinho is very happy with how he reacted. Now, yeah, I, I think with Jose Mourinho, he's a guy that wants players that are up for the fight. Mm. And I think that that kind of was a challenge to him. I think that when, um, you know, when it, when it was tough for him at Spurs, because as I mentioned, the fitness issues, he kind of shied away a bit. But really, I think he actually has really stepped up to the mark. And that's, I think, something that we have to give him credit for. Okay. He looks in shape, as I keep saying. Um, but he does. I think he has worked really hard over this period. And, um, 
yeah, I, I think he has stepped up to the challenge. And that's why I think that we will see the player. Um, you know, Spurs, obviously, there was talk of a, a large transfer fee being offered from Barcelona or getting rid of him. Mm-hmm. But I'm just so glad we stuck with him because, yeah, really, really good player, I think, eventually. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Do you see this uh, final run of games as kind of like an audition for some some of the players there before the new season starts and potentially looking to replace yeah. them players? Yeah, I think I think there's there has been reports as well. I think Eric Lamella is definitely one. Um, you know, he's a guy that Spurs fans see a lot of talent in, and when he does perform, he's he's a great player. But unfortunately, he's always getting injured. Um, so for him, it's going to be a real test. I think that that uh, I think for Eric Dyer as well is another player. I think that. You know, Spurs fans aren't quite too sure about whether he's, you know, is he good enough for Spurs? Um, he's not really found his right position either. So, mm. yeah, I th- I think there, are, there, there are a number of players. I think Harry Winks may be another one as well. I think he's not one. Um, for me, I'm a big fan of Harry Winks. Um, I think he's still young and could develop into a good player if he has right players around him. Whether he's convinced Joseph or not, you know, I'm not quite sure he's the midfielder that Mourinho wants. Um, mm. So, for him, it's that would be a big task. So there's definitely a couple of players in that squad where, yeah, I think that you know they've they've really got to go and prove themselves over these next couple of games. Yeah. What do you think it is about Winks that um, Mourinho maybe not be feeling? Is it his all round game, or do you think he's just more a, a specialist kind of player? What is it? Do you yeah, think? I, I just think that he he wants like a big strong midfielder. I think he wants a guy. Um, I think we you know I think we we've seen Spurs link with Hoybier, you know, a guy that is a real strong, tough tackler. Winks just isn't really that sort of Mourinho player, a guy that's really going to be up to, to really fight and put everything on the line. Um, you know, he's a very tidy player, Winks. I think on his day, I think we, we've seen he's produced some fantastic performances for Spurs. Um, he it was fantastic against Real Madrid in the Champions League two years ago. Which, I mean, living off a game from a couple of years ago, um, it's not the best, but you know he had a, he had a fantastic performance against Barcelona in the Champions League last year. So he's shown in he's shown in kind of spells that he's been a good player. I think he he's had an ankle issue as well, so that's kind of uh, held him back. He got a really nasty ankle injury a couple of seasons ago. I think that's kind of hindered him a bit. But I, I me personally, I think that if he was along the right, uh, if he had the right players alongside him, the likes of Lacelso or Ndombele, you know, two really strong players or really top players. No, I think he could be a, a good player, but for Mourinho, I just think that he's just missing that kind of that, you know, that that bit of fight and that um, maybe that not he's not quite as tough as I think Mourinho wants his players to be. I think that's probably the issue for Mourinho with Winks. Uh, what do you, what do you think you need what, positionally wise uh, in, the, in the transfer market? So f- f- first of all, I think that the main two positions that I would like to see Spurs strengthen in is is both fullback areas. I think that that. You know, we, we've seen in over the last couple of years or so the importance of fullbacks. I think that that's something that over the last couple of years the the importance of fullbacks has has massively risen. You know, you look at Liverpool and of course Trent and Robertson. You know that, that they're so key now to that to the way that Liverpool play. And um, you know, Spurs had it as well. We had Rose and Walker. Mm. Um, and since they've since they've left, we've never really been the same team. I think we in that uh, our final year at, um, the, at the old stadium, you know, those two were our fullbacks and they were fantastic. And of course, they were part of the team that were undefeated at home that season. Um, but we've not really been the same since. And um, as I said, the importance of fullbacks is massive now. So I think that's definitely an area that Spurs need to go and strengthen in the most. Um, and then the other issue would be a holding midfielder. I think, as I mentioned, with Winks, you know. You need someone in there where you've got Ndombele and you've got the Celso. Those two are kind of players that you want to go and express themselves. And you mm-hmm. want someone that's maybe a bit, you know, a more defensive-minded player. So a holding midfielder as well would definitely be um, the position that I'd go and target along with the fullbacks, as I said. OK. And, and what do you do about the, the elephant in the room, the, uh, the Harry Kane situation? Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk. There's, there's not many clubs that can afford to buy him. Uh, so it narrows it down to probably about three, which is Real Madrid, unfortunately yeah. Man United, and one of the one of the, the other the other big yeah. spenders. Um, where do you go from now? Do you look to get in someone who's going to be real competition for him? Do you still look for that that guy that you're looking as a backup or or as a squad yeah. player? Where do you go? I mean, it, it is difficult because you know no one's going to want to come and sit on the you know no top striker is going to want to come and sit on the bench and of course you know when you've got Harry Kane who is up there with one of the best in the world it's difficult but 
I think Harry Kane, as we've seen on many occasions, you know, the number of injuries that he's been picking up, I'm not quite sure his body can manage that, that all those games anymore. I mean, one thing that makes Man City so good is they've got, you know, Jesus and Aguero. And of course, you know, I, th I think Kane would really benefit from having that competition to be able to raise his game each week so that he knows that he's, you know, I think as well, he knows his, his spot in that 11 is safe. Yeah. So I think having that competition would be really good for him. It's it's just that case of finding the right guy. I mean, we've, we've tried to do it so many times. I think we had Vincent Janssen was one that we, we all thought would come in and maybe be that guy. Um, you know, he's a young guy coming in from Holland. He'd, he'd done really well, but obviously didn't work for him in the Premier League. Um, but in terms of Harry Kane, it's, it'll be interesting whether he'll get that move in the end because, you know, especially with the financial situation that the, the football world finds itself in now, is anyone going to want to pay £200 million or £150 million for Harry Kane when he's got that injury record? You know, and of course, he's coming to that stage. Was he? Tw I think he's 26, 27 now. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, that's a lot of money to kind of put on a player that's had that injury record. You know, if you kept him fit, you know, in Manchester United or someone went and signed him, I think he could potentially go and win them the title. I think he, you know, he is really that good, but it's... You know, it's a lot of money for uh, for any club to be going and putting it down, as I said, especially in this current climate um, and given his circumstances. So for me, it's about finding that backup. And um, yeah, I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting to see whether he kind of gives us one more season or not, and whether he's actually able to get that move anymore, given the as I said, the the current climate in football. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a tough one, um, but I think with the quality that you know that Harry Kane is when he's at his Mm. At, his, at his peak um, I think clubs will be willing to take that risk um, I don't think they'll see it as a risk and I don't think it won't come this season potentially next season yeah. season after but um, yeah I think I, I personally think that Tottenham need to bring in that competition make him mm. really fight for his spot um, yeah. let the person you know that's coming in that you're not here to be his backup you're here to fight for his spot and then that gives yeah. that because like you said Jesus and Aguero, um, Liverpool have got the front three. Um, even even yeah, Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal, uh, Arsenal got Lacazette and Aubameyang. Tottenham right, have got it's like has Harry Kane and Vincent, yeah. Yeah, Harry Kane and Parrot. It's like who 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 is it? You need that other guy to to yeah. and that, that that will push you. That will push take you the extra step, and it will give. Well, you, yeah. It's a difference between a, a title challenge and a, a Europa League spot. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, you, even 50 games, you know, when you're playing those 50 games with all the cup competitions and European matches, it's just very difficult for to keep relying on that one player. I think that, you know, that's something that Spurs have done as well, where we were, have been very heavily reliant on Kane getting the goals. And, and obviously Son as well has taken that burden away from him. I think together they combined about 50 goals, 50% uh, of the goals, sorry, this season up until they both got injured. So, you know, it shows that we have been very heavily reliant on Kane and, you know, that, that can be draining for him mentally as well, you know, to have that pressure on him of having to always be the guy to go and get the goals. So it would be, you know, if you had someone who could maybe come off the bench for the last 20 minutes or start ahead of him and then you bring Kane on in a maybe a less important match, you know, you, you don't want to be starting him every game because one, it's going to be draining for him mentally and physically and, you know, you see the damage that it's done, you know, when, when he's missing for the, all those games and you don't have that replacement. We, we saw, we, you know, the form significantly dropped since, since he got that injury. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that Spurs really would benefit from getting that second striker in. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing we talk about on the transfer exchange all the time is youth uh, prospects. Um, what what, what are, you, are, your, are your hopes for the youth prospects coming through at Tottenham? Do you know what? It's interesting, actually, because I think that Spurs have all of a sudden got a quite a good pool of youth coming through at the moment. Um, I think Troy Parrott's, obviously, as you mentioned, one of them. He's a guy that, that came in a couple of years ago at the club, um, you know, and he's still very young. I think he's 18 still. So, um, obviously, Mourinho has been very mixed with him. I think, as I mentioned before, with Ndombele, I think he's, he's kind of given him that same treatment where he's kind of maybe throwing him under the bus a bit in, in the press. But I think it's just to kind of get him to yeah. you know, really go for it. And, you know, th there is clearly a talented player in there. I mean, you, you look at his, his record in terms of scoring for the, you know, the, the youth sides of the club. It's fantastic. And, 
you know, we've just spoken about Harry Kane and I think that that pressure, you know, a lot of Spurs fans now have a lot of pressure on that striker. You know, we've just seen Harry Kane come through our academy and now we kind of have very high expectations. So it's, it's difficult, you know, he's, he's still very young and to have that pressure on him. But yeah, I, I think with Mourinho, it's been a case of he's trying to get him to fight for, for his place. Um, but there's a there's a couple of others, you know. I think Oliver Skip's one that's just come through. Um, potentially, he's um, he's a guy that might be that answer to the holding midfield position. You know, again, he's quite small, but for a holding midfielder. But I've actually been very impressed with him. I think that, um, especially in a couple of the youth games, he just looks like a really top player. Mm. Um, there's Harvey White coming through, who's um, who's 17 years old. Uh, he's a central midfielder. He can kind of play in defence. He, he'll probably be involved quite heavily, I think. I think he was involved against Norwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'll be involved a lot um, in, in, in the last couple of games. And um, uh, I think the one, the, one that I'm most, uh, the one that I'm most excited about has to be Jaffet Tanganga. I mean, you know, fantastic. He really has been very impressive. I mean, that, I think his debut was against Liverpool um, in the Premier League. And he just, you know, he look, came in, played with so much confidence. You know, he can play at, at right back, left back just looks like he'll be a top, really top central defender. I'm very excited for him. Um, Dennis Kirkin is another one that's really top young left back coming through. Um, so yeah, for, for Spurs, there's a couple of young players that are coming through. And, and you, you see as well, uh, with I think they've, with, when they've moved uh, to five substitutes in the last couple of games, yeah. you know, there might potentially be a chance for Mourinho to kind of bring them through and give them a chance. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think that should be good. It was very interesting to see what you had to say about Mourinho, youth prospects, how how they're going to finish the league, what they're going to do next season. Like I said, he knows his stuff. So go and check out his page and go and check him out on Love Sport Radio as well. On that note, as always, next week we have got an absolute trio. Next week, I want to, I want to, I want to tell you who they are now, but I can't. I won't. What we are doing is we're picking the names from the Golden Boy Award nominees. A hundred long list, we're going to pick the dispute names from that. And if they're not in the dispute, they're going to be in our two, maybe three minute videos that we're doing on each one of the nominees of the Golden Boy Awards for this year. Go and check Steve's one about Oz and Kabak. I've also just done one about Rodrigo of Real Madrid. And on that note, peace out, stay safe, and wash your hands.